let's get you the very latest on the coronavirus. The tenth coronavirus case in California. More than 24,000 now nationwide. Warning about a shortage of personal protective equipment. All the medical staff urge other nations to see what's happening and lock their nations down. Hi, my name is Steve Arms. I'm a team member at Beta Technologies. So what a bag valve mask is, it's a bag that EMTs, emergency medical technicians, hold. It looks like a football kind of thing. You squeeze it, and then the mask goes on the person's face. And you can keep someone alive if they're having difficulty breathing. You can literally, like, push air into their lungs. But the situation in Italy became so dire that um, family members were doing this, like squeezing the bags to keep people alive. Anyway, I got this thing and I had it at about, uh, I want to say three in the afternoon. And I had to like, think about like, how am I going to do this? And, uh, it occurred to me that we could use scale model aircraft parts that we already have at beta. So I went over to beta and, uh, asked Ben Coburn for, um, his thoughts about that. Did he have any spare servos? So, we use servos to move the flight control surfaces on airplanes, you know, like make the ailerons move and the rudders and stuff. And he did have some servos and he had this thing called a servo tester. So I hooked all that up and, I, and now I had a way to not only move the, uh, move something, but I had a way to control the speeds. And then I kept working on that, trying to refine it. And I got about two days later, I was feeling maybe three days later, I was feeling completely overwhelmed, but I wasn't going to be able to do it fast enough. And, and the wind was that evening was blowing through the trees really hard. It was a really windy night and it was blowing over the house. And this is going to sound strange, but it sounded like people crying and I, I couldn't sleep. It was like two in the afternoon and in the morning. And uh, so it, it became apparent to me that I needed to like, get some help. So, and I, I recognized I needed to talk to Kyle Clark and tell him I needed help and I told him I had something that worked and, and he's like, okay, what do you need for resources? And, and I said, I need Cody and Dale. My name is Cody Spiegel. I'm a design engineer at Beta Technologies. I'd say the biggest challenge, honestly, with this project is working remotely. But luckily I've worked with Dale for many, many years. So I was able to send him all my design work and he's got a good shop set up so he could prototype it all there. Dale Williams, an electrical engineer. Most designs like this take months, if not years to make into a production version. Um, and we're working on days and weeks here. so. Design iterations have been every day we have a new design, we're testing new designs. Um, we're trying to source parts that are available and can produ be produced in uh, mass quantity quickly. Um, but doing mechanical design and not having the, the parts in your hands to actually, you know, have the feet, close the loop and be like, hey, this is what I designed and built um, is, a, is a big challenge. So there's been a ton of communication back and forth, um, you know, constant FaceTime call, hook Zoom calls nonstop. Um, all day, all night to figure out what I'm actually designing and get the proper feedback. We, we took this first design up to the emergency room and presented it in front of a panel of doctors. And, you know, they, they seemed like it was interesting. We, we definitely had something working, but they could definitely poke a lot of holes in it. And we saw that this, this wasn't going to work. So we, we rapidly changed and moved on to the design that we've been working with now. Built a prototype that worked well enough to move, um, to deliver the pressures and the volumes that were required. Also, uh, Chris Woodall got involved. He's a software programmer and he started writing code on an Arduino, a little Arduino processor. We got that to work well enough to push water in a manometer uh, that, we, that I taped to the wall. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had had a conversation with a, uh, another engineer, Lino Berna. Uh, Lino wanted to do try a different design and I said you know what if you want to get involved and try something different why not let's do a parallel effort and so immediately on Sunday they started printing parts a prototype got pulled together it was in a matter of like two days maybe a day and a half after that we had a whole new design that was based around Lino's solution when we showed that to the doctors like two days later they loved it we, we're really in a stage where we're starting to get uh, final uh, parts in integration, awesome, and to see that you can do something like this so fast with like a couple of people on the ground and a bunch of smart people working kind of remote and closing the loop is, is kind of awesome. Yeah, we've done this whole thing from day one, knowing nothing, to being almost ready to try it on patients in two weeks. I I've never been involved in a team that can work this fast. It is just absolutely stunning. What can I say? 
I love these guys. That's about it. I, 